Hello, everyone. My name is Wookie Hong, and I'm with Samsung Electronics. Uh, today, I'm going to be presenting on MLPerf Mobile. And although I'm the one presenting, MLPerf Mobile is a result of the efforts of many people. And I'll introduce some of the participating organizations in just a few slides. So today's presentation is about why mobile performance benchmarking analysis is hard and what to do about it. Uh, the emphasis here is more on providing background on the landscape and policies that influence ML performance on mobile, and by extension, the impact they have on mobile machine learning benchmarks. So ML Perf Mobile is a work of many organizations. To put together the initial 0.7 version of the app, it took a team of people from ARM, Google, Harvard, Intel, ML Commons, MediaTek, Microsoft, Qualcomm, and Samsung. And we still hold weekly meetings we just recently finished the submission for 1.0 of the app, and we'll probably be pushing the results out in May. So uh, before we begin the main topic, let's take a moment to contextualize benchmarking on mobile by looking at what's happening in the general inference landscape. So simply put, ML applications are everywhere. ML powers everything from simple voice triggers to more complicated speech recognition tasks, and transformer models like GPT-3 are running in the cloud. You can find ML workloads running on wearables, smart speakers, phone security cameras, cars, and even in data centers. And thanks to the developments in neural network models, as well as hardware innovation, workloads that we used to run in primarily data centers and servers are now making their way into more and more smartphones and consumer devices. But the question is, if you want to move these workloads into consumer devices, you need to be able to understand and communicate and compare the performance of the target device in a reliable way. And this would help with evaluating and planning the deployment of these workloads, especially when you plan to run the models on different classes of devices. But the immediately obvious problem is that you have a wide gamut of devices and you have an equally wide gamut of performance. So take, for example, let's think about memory for a second. The smallest microcontrollers have a few kilobytes of RAM and maybe a few megabytes. And more recent smartphones have several gigabytes of RAM. And at the data centers, you have a lot more RAM than that. And there are other considerations like bandwidth and power budgets that dramatically influence system design. And you really couldn't create a single benchmark that captures performance characteristics of all of these devices. So the answer is, of course, to create specialized benchmarks. And for MLPerf inference, we have Tiny, which will be introduced later today, Mobile Edge Data Center, and that leads us to our main topic for mobile. So from a form factor perspective, if you think about it, mobile is much better defined than, say, edge devices, where you can find anything that has anything from a Raspberry Pi all the way up to a A100. That is considered edge. And you have smartphones, which I think most of us can agree on what a smartphone looks like. It's battery powered. It should fit in your pocket. There's little disagreement about the dimensions and what kind of power source a mobile device will use. And similarly, from an OS perspective, things are looking pretty good. So in the smartphone and tablet space, you have Android and iOS, two main OSs. In the case of uh, MLPerf Mobile, the V0.7, which was released in last October, we focused on the Android app first. But in spite of what mobile has going for it in terms of a well-defined form factor, there definitely are challenges. So this is the challenge, it's fragmentation. This figure in particular is a tree map from a few years ago and it captures the very rich diversity of the Android ecosystem. So each of these boxes represents a single device, let's say a Samsung Galaxy S21. But even within that single box, you may see a significant difference in performance depending on whether or not you updated your phone. Did you apply the latest security patch? That essentially subdivides each square. So the security and OS app updates have a tangible impact on end device performance. And what this translates to is that each of these squares is further divided up according to what software updates you've applied. So that's the challenge that we face. So instead of just saying that fragmentation is a problem, let's try to pick apart this problem layer by layer. So if you look at the figure here, you'll see AI hardware at the very center and then the OEM lifecycle in blue at the very outer part. And we'll cover each of these layer by layer. So multiple and different hardware engines. So current SOCs, they employ a lot of different types of hardware to accelerate neural networks. 
for example, the CPU, GPU, DSP, and neural processing unit, or HVX, whatever you want to call it, can be used to accelerate your neural networks with different trade-offs. So some can be more flexible, and some can be more specialized, but much more efficient. And all of these different hardware configurations come with SDKs that are meant to help developers convert models to specific vendor type files. And these SDKs are almost always tightly coupled to the hardware. Ideally, the entirety of a neural network would be run on an accelerator, but this isn't always the case. Instead, what happens is that the developer has to use the SDK to select a combination of the MPU, DSP, GPU, or CPU to run the neural networks. And if you run a neural network without using the SDK, there's a good chance you won't be utilizing the full capabilities of the underlying hardware. As in, what will most likely happen is you'll be using the CPU fallback to run the networks instead of a dedicated accelerator, which is probably what you want to do if you want to measure hardware performance. So let's move on to software frameworks. There are a lot of software frameworks that are used to work on neural networks, PyTorch, TensorFlow. But when it comes to support on phones, the SOC vendors can only support a subset of operators that is substantially smaller than what these frameworks can support. So if you're working on a particular model and you want to test the performance, you may not be able to run that model on a phone. And also there are multiple developer options that have implications for achievable hardware performance. So take for an example, you want to deploy an app to the Google Play Store and you want to accelerate your neural network. What do you do? One way to do it is to use a native OS framework like NNAPI. This option will provide developers with the best scalability because the app developer doesn't have to use vendor-specific SDKs. So if you want to target Snapdragon products, you're going to have to use Snappy. If you want to target Samsung Exynos products, you're going to have to use Exynos, the ENN SDK. And that type of variation is not that easy to manage. So the native OS approach only works if the SOC vendor, so the native OS framework being an API here only works if the SOC vendor provides good device drivers. But working on an API requires an additional investment from the SOC vendor. And this isn't always that straightforward. The alternative is for developers to use a vendor SDK like uh, Qualcomm Snappy Exynos SDK. And while the performance that you'll see here is likely to be much better, it takes a while to understand the tool chain and the quirks of the hardware. So even while the performance here is much better, it significantly increases the investments that developers need to make the app, which if you're not so lucky, may even require recompilation with each SDK update. And we'll cover why SOC vendors choose this option in the deployment scenario section that'll follow a few pages later. And developers soon will have the option to compile a model for a specific device while avoiding reliance on runtimes. TVM and MLIR are potential examples. So when I say soon, uh, this is more of a research area and it's being actively developed. And another reason why benchmarking AI performance is difficult is because there's a lack of clarity regarding deployment scenarios. So what is a deployment scenario? It's how you deploy a model to a device. So take, for example, a known model deployed on a known device. The most common example here is the OEM application. So think about the default camera app on your Android device. That is an OEM created application, usually. Well, if you buy a new phone and then you just open up the camera app, that's the default application. So OEMs employ neural networks extensively on camera apps nowadays because it directly impacts the user perception of the device. So um, bokeh, or if you have really high zoom, you have super resolution, and you have denoising used for dark types of scenarios. And because the camera features are such a differentiating feature, OEMs will use the vendor SDKs to make sure that they're utilizing the full capabilities of the SOC. But there's also a different type of scenario, the NNAPI scenario. So if you have a model that's supposed to run on unknown devices that are supposed to be deployed to the Play Store using NNAPI, that's probably the most cost-effective way for app developers. Because if you think about it, if economics is a deciding factor, you want the greatest reach. And since still a relatively small number of devices in the market have neural network accelerators, it's not that easy to justify targeting many SOCs using different SDKs. So the main takeaway here is that when measuring ML performance on mobile devices, it's important to distinguish what the device is capable of or what app developers experience. And just for completeness, here's another type of deployment model uh, where both the models and the devices are known. And the scenario here would be something along the lines of a scenario of a service provider like uh, Verizon or AT&T deploying models to devices within its service network. So the final challenge for ML performance analysis on mobile is controlled by the OEM lifecycle management. 
which significantly complicates the native OS framework approach as well as the vendor SDK approach. So this is what I mean. In mobile, when an OEM releases software updates, each of these updates goes through significant QA testing before rollout. The delay can be anywhere from one month to many months. For unlocked devices, OEM QA is all that you need, but the locked devices will have to pass through the carrier's QA process. And vendor SDKs, the updates to Snappier, Xenos, and NSDK, uh, can usually be pushed through a smaller maintenance release, but for an NAPI update, it requires a significantly bigger OS update that happens less frequently. And also, OEMs don't necessarily pick up every single update pushed out by the SOC vendor. And what this means for benchmarking on mobile is that the software update may impact results, but you may not be able to install the same software configuration to replicate these results. So looking back at this section, mobile AI performance is hard because of the diversity of AI hardware, software frameworks, and developer options, and the various deployment scenarios and complexities involving the OEM lifecycle. So much like the problem that Christine addressed over an inference, the MLPerf mobile app was developed to create an open and transparent mobile AI suite. It's open in the sense that it's a consortium of industry and academic organizations with shared interests, and it's transparent in terms of process and rules. And it sheds light on what's used to accelerate the workloads and implements pure auditing process as well. And also there is a demand for a shared set of rules. And we hope these rules that we're working on at MLPerf Mobile can help drive mobile AI adoption. And also what we're trying to do is leverage the best practices from the mobile main inference group as well. For the 0.7 release, we focused on creating the method and process needed to create a sustainable benchmark. And instead of opting for a large number of models, we focused on a few tasks that are representative of real world mobile use cases. So if you look at the model mobile net edge TPU over an image classification, it's a model that is optimized more for mobile accelerators. So if you think of the typical Inception V3 model that's used a lot in benchmarks, it was a model that was created not with mobile devices in mind. So for mobile net edge TPU, it specifically uses uh, fused inverted bottleneck convolutions to improve hardware utilization. And it removes operators like hard swish and squeeze excite blocks that were previously present in models like mobile net V3. So while the object detection model and semantic segmentation model were selected based off of prevalence within the industry, uh, over time, I expect something similar to happen and that they'll be replaced by mobile accelerator optimized models as well. So MLPerf Mobile leveraged a lot of the work done over from MLPerf Inference. The load generator was created by MLPerf to test different inference platforms and measure parameters such as latency and throughput. And it logs information about the system for post-submission validation. For the main inference group, load generator supports multi-stream, server, single stream, and offline mode, which was introduced a bit ago by Christine. For the mobile working group, uh, we've leveraged this work and we essentially capture single stream and offline modes because that's what happens on phones. So if you think about it, um, the server scenario doesn't apply, nor does the multi-stream. Multi-stream might, but not for now. So here are some screenshots of the app. It provides an easy to use out of the box inference benchmark for popular vision and natural language processing applications. And while the app was developed for Android devices, there was a mobile submission from Intel as well. It wasn't done using the app, but rather code from the main inference group. But the load gen's the same and the process is in place. So for V0.7, we were able to support smartphones and laptops by starting out with the reference TensorFlow model and providing separate code paths for different developer and deployment scenarios. So code path one captures the vendor SDK path, two captures the NNAPI path or the vendor delegate path, and three is the vendor SDK path via code from the main inference group. So these three code paths allow SOC vendors to conduct the backend optimizations or run using the default settings, and it will essentially allow Elmoport to support the full range of devices within the mobile ecosystem. So here are the results from 2020 November and we will be publishing updated results in May. What I can tell you is that all the scores have gone up tremendously and to await for the publication. So the MediaTek chipset here is the Dimensity 820 on the Xiaomi Redmi 10X. The Qualcomm chipset is the Snapdragon 865 on the Asus ROC Phone 3. And the Samsung chipset is the Exynos 990 on the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. So aside from the closed division submissions, we also had an optional offline mode for V0.7. 
and their Qualcomm delivered 605 inferences per second, and Exynos delivered 674 inferences per second. So this final figure captures the potential and actual code paths that submitters could have taken. The dotted lines capture the potential code paths, and the solid lines capture the actual submitted code, path, code paths used for submission. And as you can see, there are significant differences with regard to how ML systems work on each device. And it's important to understand how these variations impact what you're trying to measure. So in conclusion, benchmarking mobile AI is hard due to the fragmented ecosystem. And I hope that this talk has shed some light in terms of why the benchmark suite helps bring clarity to hardware comparison on mobile. And it defines the tasks, scenarios, data sets, and methods. And it establishes a clear set of metrics and divisions and it allows for hardware and software flexibility. So please join MLPerf Mobile if you want to conduct research, and we can help you navigate some of these complexities. Thank you for the opportunity to present, and that'll be it for me.